Rocket Box Theatre presents Kylie and Me by Matthew Ingram. This piece of audio theatre is the fifth in the series of Rocket Bites, our digital season made in association with the Sunflower Foundation. That's my dad, that is. Calling me because we're going to go watch Kylie tonight. He doesn't really like her, but he bought tickets for this anyway because he knows how much I like her. Knows I basically idolise her. You see that there? Did that in school. I went to one of the IT rooms at lunchtime and just printed off this massive picture of her. Like seven pages of A3. Had such a stress because we weren't allowed to go into the IT room at lunch. And when I started printing, it came out black and white, so I had to do it all over again. Folded up the pages so they fit in a poly pocket, made sure none of the pages showed what was on it, and just tried to keep it as neat as I could for the rest of the day. I had PE last lesson, so that was easier said than done. Flinging stuff round in my bag, getting changed and that. I'm always pretty careful in the PE changing rooms, to be fair. But that day, I had to be extra careful. Basically impossible. How I managed to keep the poster tidy, get changed, careful like, hide in my body, like make sure no one saw the poster and try and see the rugby boys getting changed is beyond me. And I had to do it all again at the end of the lesson. Tell you what, I'm a bloody genius. Bloody, bloody sly as fuck like snake in the grass, let me tell you. It's good sly though, isn't it? Careful, isn't it? And the poster stayed all right, though. Not too crumpled or nothing. It looks good up there, doesn't it? Had to do something to cheer this place up. Tell you what, though. I am so excited for tonight. Been waiting for this for, like, forever. Got the tickets last Christmas, and I just freaked out. We don't have stairs in the caravan, so I just remember as kids, like, running down the corridor to the front room, and I could see these two piles of presents. But there's three of us. And I could tell from the wrapping paper mine was missing and my face turned. Dad spotted it straight away. So he made a thing, like a speech, and he turned to me and he said, Right, everyone. You might see we've only got two pies here. Jeannie, I got your present. And he pulls out this envelope from his pocket and he gives it to me. And he says, Now I know it looks small, but big things come in small packages, don't they? So keep a hold of it. And I want you to wait till everyone else has opened their presents before you open yours. So I'm sat there waiting. And my stomach is going and I can't tell if it's because I'm hungry or excited. And everyone else opens their presents and I'm sat there. Then it comes to me and Dad says, Right, Jim, you can open yours now. And I am loving this. Everyone's attention on me like. And this is like the Christmas in the films. And I peel the envelope open and I peek inside and I see her name and I just fall to the floor crying like happy tears and Dad says happy then and all I can do is nod and he said to me he said Merry Christmas son I loves you and that made up for everything didn't need nothing else that day him saying he loves me and we're gonna go see Kylie and I'm so happy he's coming with me too wouldn't want anyone else with me on a night like this. No one, just me and Dad and actual Kylie Minogue. Mum just sat on the sofa through it all, all stony-faced and that. Can't ever get Mum to smile like. She's just so cold all the time. Can never say anything to Mum to make her smile. She's always so moody and stressed and that. Dad though, Dad was the fucking best. Going into school on that first day back was magic. I had to use a suitcase at that point. Didn't have a bag. And I walked down the drive like very big bollocks. Hearing people talking about what they got for Christmas was fucking sick. Because I knew they couldn't top Kylie. One of the boys turned to me in English, said, 
Or what you get for Christmas? Lump of coal for the rabbit touch? I said, fuck that. Going to see Kylie, aren't I? Kylie Minogue, me and my dad. <laughs> and he just laughed. He said, fucking puff there. I mean, could be worse, to be honest. I was quite happy with that. So I laughed along and then I realised what he said. Just like, fuck, he's calling me a pufter. And I was like, red alert, like I'm not. It, it's not only pufters like Kylie Minogue. <laughs> he turned away then. Just laughed and went back to the rest of his boys. He always did that though. Didn't care though. I had Kylie to keep me going. <laughs> and get ain't. Geraint was a boy in my class And he was still one of the boys But not as harsh as the rest of them Came from the Welsh school a few months back And he's so, he's so clever And like funny And good looking And he's so nice when he's by himself I bet he likes Kylie on the sly There was this time once And I'm not making this up Where we kissed almost In class and I'm not sure which one And I'm not sure why He's doing this thing, like leaning into the boys and trying to kiss him. And all the boys are leaning back, and I think it's a bit weird to be honest. But he comes to me, and I don't know, this just feels like so natural. So I lean in too, and we, and we get closer and closer, and my heart's beating, and it's getting hard to breathe, and... And then he pulls back and just laughs with everyone. Never felt more embarrassed in my life. And when the bell goes at the end and it's break time, all the boys are still laughing about it. And a chant starts. And I try and tell him, call after him saying, I'm not a puff, I'm not. He didn't want to listen though. Never want to listen to me. Doesn't matter though, does it? Long as I got my family and my dad and they love me and they don't think I'm a puff. That's what I love about Kylie, like, like she's for everyone. Doesn't matter who you are, and I mean, I'm not being funny, but you try listening and spinning around and not wanting to dance on the table, or, or love at first sight and not feeling just free. She does everything for me. Makes me feel like I can be whoever I want to be. She's got some bloody bangers, mind. Dad made me like this greatest hits Mega Mix CD that he gave to me on Boxing Day too. Look, let me find this one. Right, I love it. Gonna use it when I tell Geraint how I feel about him. I've decided. Gonna do it next week, so just like use it to get me head in it. Hang on. Get in tea before we go to the concert. Are you? She's just lying. She is. <laughs> just, just winding me up. <laughs> she's lying. She's, she's, um, she's lying, actually, because I'm going to go see Kylie. She's just winding me up. She is. Not bingo tonight. And my dad's taking me and all, because, because he knows I love her and he loves me. So I am going and she's lying like. Like, maybe not tonight. We're not. But we are going, Dad and me. We are going, and I can't wait to see her, and Dad's gonna love her. We are going. Hey, and don't laugh at me. Not like them. And I, I am going, even if it's not tonight. Even if the date's not even been booked in yet. I am going, and... And even if Dad doesn't come with me, even... I'm still gonna love it. Even if he doesn't come, even if he doesn't book it, even without him here, I'll go. Don't need anyone else to go with me. 
Because my dad, like, my dad's away on business, see? So he's never, like, round. Haven't seen him in years because he works so hard. Like, works for me and mum and the others because he loves us. So sacrifices we got to make, see? When you're in business, mum says sometimes you've got to put work before the family. And, and that's what dad's done, I think. Because he does love us. That's why we don't see him. He'd never leave us in the lurch or, or call us names or call us like, call us like puffs. And when I turn 18, I'm going to get all the savings he's been putting away for me in the bank. And I'm going to use it to buy a car so I can drive. Like drive away from here and get away from everyone. Get away from here and I'm going to move to a city. Same city dad's in. And I'm going to live in a flat and, and, and Geraint's going to be there and I'm going to have friends. And we're going to watch Kylie together and listen to her and I'm going to be happy. I'm going to have a job and I'm going to be so well paid you wouldn't fucking believe and it's going to be the best. Buy real CDs for Christmas, not rip-offs from the computer. And I'm going to cover my wall in real posters, not shitty pieces of A3. I am. Like, I can see your faces, but I am, let me tell you. And one day, I'm going to get there. And when I do, you're going to feel all sorts of things, like pride and, and guilt. Everything. And when it comes to it, and I'm seeing Kylie live in London, and maybe you'll be with me, but when I'm there, and Kylie's there, and everyone else that matters is there, I'm going to fucking love it. Because I'm going to be like, free. Thank you for listening to Kylie and Me, written by Matthew Ingram and performed and produced by Rocketbox Theatre. This piece was made in association with the Sunflower Foundation as part of the Sunflower Skills Club. You've been listening to Rocket Bites by Rocketbox Theatre. See you soon. Yeah,